Now, earlier we talked about Steve Young's comments about the Baltimore Ravens as an organization and their philosophies that have been holding Lamar Jackson back as a quarterback. But RG3, he took a different approach. While he said the Ravens as a whole are not holding them back, he said it's a very particular piece. And let's hear what he had to say. Are the Ravens holding Lamar back? Molly, I disagree that the Ravens as a whole organization are holding Lamar Jackson back. I was there for three years in that locker room, in that building, and saw how much energy they poured into Lamar Jackson and how much he was receptive of the things that they were trying to get him to do. Whether it was the advanced technology that they used to find deficiencies in his mechanics or bringing in specialized throwing coaches to help him develop more as a passer. And he has shown that he can do that. In 2019, he led the league in touchdown passes with 36 of them. So I don't think it's the ball Baltimore Ravens as a whole, and I know Ravens fans are going to rejoice after this, it's Greg Roman. Greg Roman's system is a run-first system, and he builds that system not only to Lamar's strengths, but also to Greg Roman's strengths as a sophisticated run game orchestrator, and also what the Ravens have at their disposal. So I agree that Lamar Jackson could be the greatest player to ever play the game if he had Patrick Mahomes' weapons, if he had Justin Herbert's weapons, but he doesn't have those guys, and the Ravens are going back to their 2019 recipe when they were 14 and two of bully ball, three tight end sets, run the ball a lot, and allow Lamar to throw high pa uh, percentage passing plays. So from that regard, it's not the Ravens, it's Greg Roman and his system, and no high price free agent wants to go play in a run first system with Greg Roman. So if they want to get past and, and allow Lamar to continue to develop, then they gotta figure out a way to bring in new personnel and that might start with replacing the coordinator. Do you agree? Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta make it. So YouTube team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Who Done It? Whose fault is it? What is the reason that Lamar Jackson is being held back? Or really, who is the reason? Now, you, of course, just listened to RG3 and him give his two cents on why he feels it's not the Ravens organization as a whole, but it's really Greg Roman and that offense. Um, and with some of what RG3 said, I agree with with some other parts I disagree with. And we're going to get into that. But before we do. I got to give a special shout out to our newest Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, Jared J. Appreciate you becoming a patron. And really shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If anybody would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Now, RG3, some of the things that he brought up in his argument. He talked about Patrick Mahomes. And he talked about how Lamar hasn't had an opportunity with somebody like Patrick Mahomes and the weapons that Patrick Mahomes has had. Like the weapons that Justin Herbert has had. And with that part, I completely agree. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. That is something that we've continued to express on here so much. So much. Um, but, and he also talked about how this system is built and catered to one Greg Roman. And that part I agree with wholeheartedly as well. But then there were some other parts where RG3 spoke of the system being catered to not only Greg Roman's strengths, but Lamar Jackson's. And that part I disagree with. This system was built for Greg Roman to have success as an offensive coordinator. And the, another part that I disagree with RG3 was just really the, the, the main topic of his conversation that it's not the actual Ravens organization as a whole, but it is only and specifically Greg Roman. And he even said, hey, I know Ravens fans gonna rejoice over this. And you know, a, a lot of them will, but I'm not one of them because I just, I just don't agree. While I do agree that, yes, Greg Roman, he does have his issues, he has his deficiencies, he has his problems. Is he the best offensive coordinator in the world? Oh, no, 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 he's not. Is he the worst offensive coordinator in the world? No, 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 he's not. But the issue is far deeper than Greg Roman. This is an organizational thing. This is not just an offensive coordinator thing. It's so easy to say, oh, Greg Roman this, Greg Roman that. And Greg Roman, again, we, we've talked about Greg Roman a lot on here. He has his issues. And, and the reason with, with the Ravens 
continuing to keep Greg Roman throughout the years, this is one of the biggest reasons why I just, I've said it multiple times, I do not feel like they fully believe in Lamar Jackson. I don't. Because Ravens are not stupid. They're not dumb. They are a, a great team, a great franchise, a great organization. They do a lot of research, especially when it comes to the hiring process. So there is absolutely no way and no excuse that they would go out and bring on Greg Roman, who was originally like a tight ends coach and a run game coordinator. Then they flip him to offensive coordinator. There's no way that they just erased his previous past from their memories. Because we know Greg Roman usually after about two years, he usually maxes out. And it's the same patterns every time. The run game is super strong. The run game goes crazy. The pass game is... Eh. The run game is super strong. The pass game is... Eh. And again, the run game is super strong. And the pass game is... Eh. We, we've seen it. We've seen it with the, the 49ers. We've seen it with the Bills. We've seen it with the Ravens. So it's been this continuous pattern. But the Ravens still like, hey, Greg Roman's our guy. We sticking with him. Now, continuity. I get that. Trust me, I do. We remember the days of Joe Flacco. It was a different offensive coordinator. It seemed like every other year. So I, I get the continuity thing. But then at the same time, while continuity is a great thing, continuity can also be an issue. So with the Ravens deciding, hey, we're going to have this continuous thing. We're going to have continuity with Greg Roman. That shows me like they are content with just being all right. They are content with the passing game just being straight. They are content with the passing game exactly where it is right now. Now, last year, I know a lot of people like to bring it up. Oh, we saw strides in the passing game last year. We certainly did. But it seems like that was only situational. So much is going to be shown this year, whether last year's passing game and the strides that it took forward, which we were glad about, we're going to see whether that was just situational, if that was due to the circumstances with everybody being hurt, or if they really feel like, hey, we're going to keep up in this passing game. And we, of course, have heard Greg Roman say this and that about the vault, about the 20 percent, about, oh, Lamar's throwing the ball now. I, I'm going to add plays. and we, we, We've heard it all. We're going to forge a new identity. We've heard all of that stuff, but it still has been the same thing. But again. Greg Roman is not the only issue. The issue is far above Greg Roman's head. Because RG3, something that he brought out toward the end, where he was like, oh, well, the, if the, the, the Ravens may need to, to bring in, they may need to make a change at offensive coordinator. Ravens can make all the changes they want to at offensive coordinator. But like we said so many times, if the Ravens continue to have the same exact philosophy, ground and pound, bully ball like RG3 mentioned, running teams out of the stadium, if they continue to have that, hey, okay, cool, but it's, it seems like that's only going to get you so far. Because when you need to switch it up, when you need to make an adjustment, when you need to make a change... Everybody going to be looking lost because it's like, hold up. We, we just been running, running, running all year long. But when it's time to pass, pass, pass and heavy, then it could have everybody looking lost. So this is just why we want more balance with the offense. I know a word that uh, the homie Sarah Ellison used is just more harmony to where they, they just complement each other a lot more. The passing game complements the run game. The run game complements the pass game and so on and so forth. We know the Ravens can run the ball, but th look, the Ravens are going to be able to run the ball with or without Greg Roman. Straight up. But it's the passing game that is the issue. And Greg Roman, he, he is not the main issue. It's an organizational thing. So while I, while I halfway agree with some of the stuff RG3 said, again, with his main point, I disagree with it. And he talked about, oh, no, I was there for three years. And sometimes I'm like, wow, yeah, RG3 was here for, 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 for three years. It went by pretty fast. But with that, RG3 was like, I was there for three years. I remember all the energy they put into Lamar Jackson. And I'm thinking, okay, th does energy win you games? Does energy win you Super Bowls? Does energy win you playoffs? What energy got to do with it? And I know the vibe changed and whatnot, but en energy ain't enough, my friend. But then he did talk about how they use tools and all this advanced technology and whatnot to, to help him to, to find flaws in his, uh, his mechanics so he could work on that and start improving that. And, and he's done that over the years. 
So shout out to the Ravens and shout out to Lamar for working on that. But the again, the, the lack of investment in wide receiver, that's not Greg Roman. And it can be so easy. And RG3 brought this up too. He was like, oh, no high-priced free agent wide receiver is going to want to play in Greg Roman's system. You tell me, back in the Flacco days, when these receivers, especially these anonymous receivers too, they said all that dude does is throw it up and hope for a pass interference call. That's all they do. Back before Flacco, T.O. got traded to the Ravens. He got traded to the Ravens and he's, I ain't playing here. You think I'm, a, I'm not playing here? No, thanks. I ain't for it. No, I don't want it. T.O. said he's not having that. So this is not, a, Greg Roman wasn't around back then. He wasn't around back then. Lamar wasn't around back then. It's, the, it's an organizational philosophy type of thing. This ain't got, while it does have something to do with Greg Roman, this really ain't got nothing to do with Greg Roman. It is so far above Greg Roman's head. So until the Ravens themselves as an organization, until they make strides to where they really show that they truly, genuinely care about the passing game, they did not do it with Joe Flacco. And he was their first true franchise quarterback. He was the first quarterback for the Ravens where they knew going into every week one that he was playing. They knew, all right, hey, Joe Flacco, he going to be our guy. That's our guy for the season. And they really knew he was that guy. They didn't do it for him. They, they didn't maximize Joe Flacco's talents at all. We, we never really got to consistently see the best of Joe Flacco. We didn't. Because they would still do this same cheap stuff at the wide receiver position. And hey, they did have some hits where it actually worked out for Derek Mason. One year with Steve Smith Sr., obviously Anquan Bowden. But then you got, a, you got a lot of misses too, man. You got a whole lot of misses. But at, at that position, hey, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. So now with, with Lamar Jackson, it's, it's been a lot of the same story. A lot of the same story. They get a lot of guys that's way past their prime, that's over the hill. And then they got some guys, some guys that have denied them too. Oh, no, nah, I don't want to play for the Ravens. No, thanks. To where even times they even offer these people more money. T.Y. Hilton, Juju Smith-Schuster, them dudes said, no thanks. I don't want it. There's Brian initially. They said no. But then, you know, the, the cast offs, they're like, hey, I'll come through, no problem. And again, Ravens are not some bad team. They are not some terrible team. They are not some trash team. They are none of the above. But... They just, they, they don't value wide receiver like that. They don't value the passing game like it should be valued. Wouldn't you want to make your quarterback's job easier? Wouldn't you want to make your coordinator's job easier? And wouldn't you want to make your whole football team's job that much easier? I, I think the answer to all three would be yes. But with the Ravens, it seemed like they just want to do things their way and, and not get with the times or with the program. And it's like, you, you don't have to scrap the run game. You don't need to do that. The running game is going to have its success. But the, there needs to be a higher priority placed on throwing that football. And this is old news. This is not just a Lamar Jackson thing. But since Lamar Jackson is the current quarterback, and since Lamar Jackson is so special as a quarterback, that's why this conversation keeps being had over and over and over. Because you're, you're wasting a great opportunity here. With somebody very special, you're wasting it. And nobody wants to see their time, their efforts wasted. Nobody wants to see that. So it's important that the Ravens really step this thing up moving forward. And the, hey, they got so much to prove this year. You know they hear all this stuff. Ravens, are a team, they, they hear all the noise. And they listen to all the noise that people are saying. They've proven that time and time again. Sometimes it could be a good thing. Sometimes it could be a bad thing. But it is a thing. They listen and they hear all of that stuff. So it's important that they don't, they don't even have to respond through words. They don't have to respond through media, even though they're going to be asked in interviews and stuff. Oh, how'd you feel about what RG3 said? How'd you feel about what Steve Young said? 
But they need to respond through their play. They need to respond and show, hey, all right, we rolling with who we got. Okay. All right. Bateman, Proche, Duvernay, Wallace, Bridges, Polk, whoever else is going to be. Mark Andrews in there. Uh, Isaiah Likely. Nick Boyle. Patrick Ricard. Hey, shout out to them screen passes. Um, and, and, and anybody else who's going to contribute in the passing game, Ravens just got to come with it. They got to come with it and they have to show like, hey, we do care about this thing. They have to make an organizational shift in the passing game. Yes, they've won two Super Bowls and they ain't even been around that long. That is a beautiful thing. And we all appreciate that. That, that is just a wonderful thing. Wonderful accomplishment. But they've had opportunities. They've had squads. They've had teams recently to where they should have been a lot closer. They should have been a lot better. But they lack in a certain area, and it's been the same area that they've continued to lack in. When that plan A, that run game ain't working, hey, pass game got to be ready. Lamar don't have anything else to prove. He has nothing else to prove. Why, are, why is the team treating him like he has more to prove? Like he hasn't proven himself already. What more does he need to do? I don't understand. So it's, it's so important that moving forward, the Ravens really show, hey, all right, we with it. The NFL, the NFL, has they encourage teams. They don't straight up say it, but by the referees, by all the calls, by penalties and stuff, they're basically saying, hey, throw the ball. We're trying to make it easier for everybody to throw the ball. Do it, please. It's so easy. Running the ball, uh, you could do that, but like we don't even want your you don't even want your running back to lower the crown of his helmet because we could call a penalty on your running back for that. But they with the pass interference calls, the, the illegal contact, the defensive holding, you know, you can't even look at a wide receiver the wrong way without it being a, a flag on the field. Take advantage, Ravens. That's all we're trying to say. Take advantage of Lamar on his rookie deal. Well, hey, it's too late. Fifth year option. Take advantage of the, the rules that are in place by the NFL. Take advantage of what's right in front of you. That's all we want. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. Shout out to Graven.